Welcome to the fifth Wandsworth Coronavirus Business Forum. Have your say for businesses. So for today, Councillor Mr. Ravi Govindia, the leader of Wandsworth Council, who will be giving you a, a talk at the beginning. Uh, and then an update from Graham Russell, the Assistant Resources Director of Wandsworth Council, on how the implementation process for support is going. We hope to have Richard Behrman uh, joining us from the British Business Bank. And uh, Richard will be giving us an overview, coronavirus business interruption loan schemes. And uh, we also have Mr. James Carden from Barclays Bank. And James has very kindly offered to give us some uh, helpful tips and advice on what makes a successful application uh, through this process. The panel uh, will be here for the Q&A session. I'm not sure that uh, Mr. Govindia and um, Richard Behrman will be able to stay for the Q&A, but we do have people who can hopefully answer those questions for you. Now, I would like to hand over to uh, the leader of Wandsworth Council, Mr. Ravi Govindia. Over to you, Councillor Govindia. Thank you, Steve, um, very much. I mean, welcome to all your members. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to the businesses in Abara, but I will, and I wish that I was speaking to you at a rather better time than now. Um, I think your meeting's always been very personal and convivial, so speaking to you all from a distance and in a kind of unconnected way is novel and unusual for us. Um, this is the first network, Chambers networking event that I have attended. I know there have been four others, and Jonathan Cook, my deputy, has attended each one of them. Uh, the chief executive addressed the first, first one, and Mr. Russell has been at each one of them. And of course, uh, after each of the, your networking sessions, both uh, Councillor Cook and Mr. Russell have given me detailed briefing on what the issues that have arisen, and we've been able to help with anything that we can uh, that your members have raised. The Chamber is well known and well regarded as a networking uh, organization with local businesses, bringing them together, uh, providing practical advice and information. And over the years, the Council and the Chamber have developed a very, very sound uh, partnership. Now, this partnership has become much, much more needed in this current crisis. And so, Steve, congratulations to you for harnessing the modern technology to make sure that the partnership continues and, in fact, you have widened the partnership beyond your members and made, made these sessions open to any business in the borough. So that's great, good news to you, for you, good news for us too. And of course, excellent news for the business community. Um, you, know, you will have seen, or your members will have seen their lives turned upside down by this coronavirus. I mean, the same has happened to the council and our wider community. As a council, we have had to rapidly respond to the impact of the virus itself, uh, supporting households of, of where there are more vulnerable people. Um, we have had to deal with homeless people as well as supporting the NHS and the hospital discharges. There's been a huge task that we have had to undertake that as a matter of urgency. We're also dealing with many impacts of the measures to contain the virus, including supporting the young children and young people, homeless people, and the households, households where uh, the income has plummeted uh, rather suddenly because of uh, layoffs or furloughing. As an organization, we've moved very quickly to make sure that the vast majority of our staff continue to work, but continue to work from home. Uh, we have adapted our consumer uh, facing capacity, uh, including establishing the community hub. The, the hub is directed at supporting the most vulnerable members of our society. And since it opened just over a month, uh, six and a half thousand calls have been received by hub members and, and each one has been assessed and uh, uh, triaged and, and referred to the most appropriate council department. Uh, like you, we have had to manage on vastly reduced incomes. I mean, uh, you will imagine that our fees and income has plummeted. We have not been able to collect a number of our revenue streams, and there are cash flow problems, even for an organization as vast as a council. But we are, of course, playing our part in supporting the businesses, especially delivering the government's business support initiatives, and, and that's delivered through the business rate system. We moved very quickly to establish these initiatives. 
and some of which are completely brand new. I mean, this is not, these are unprecedented times. This is not what we do. We collect money. We don't give money out. So in a sense, we have had to learn new ways of doing things. But the aim has been to get the cash out as quickly as possible to as many businesses as possible. So today we've uh, sort of distributed nearly 44 million, which is 75% of the amount allocated to the council. And we're still working on, on making sure that other eligible businesses that have not applied do apply. And so in that area, we need your help, help of your friends and, and, and other businesses you know. If any business you think is in fact qualifying and eligible for this support, please alert them, please alert us so that we can actually get this money out. It is important and it should be our aim, both you and us, that no eligible business in the borough misses out on what is an exceptionally generous offer by, by, by the government. Uh, I know that many of you wish that the funds could have reached you sooner, but you know, we were one of the first in the country to set the scheme going. And I know that Mr. Russell and his team have worked tirelessly to make sure that the money was in your bank accounts as, a, as soon as possible. We also want to help businesses and entrepreneurs access other forms of support that the government is offering. And for that, the advice on our website is, is vital. And, and so invite your members to visit www.wonsatgov.uk forward slash business should help. Another help way in which we can help ourselves and our community is to get us to buy local and support our businesses locally. And I'll be exploring with my colleagues in the council and with you and the bids <coughs> how we can get 317,000 people who live in this borough to buy local, support our local shops and our businesses. It's a campaign for now, but also a campaign that we will want to develop as we go forward. We have provided at no cost access to advice from local accountants. And again, your help in that has very, been, been very helpful. I see that um, Aurangzeb is on, on, on the call and I know that you've pioneered some of this work. Um, to help the self-employed people access, complete their 1819 accounts so they can then access the government help. We work closely with Steve Yu uh, uh, to bring the relevant expertise. I, mean, I know you've got several speakers today and we continue to, you continue to invite speakers and speak to your members um, to share experiences and advice and help people through this, this unprecedented times. They should help, the, these, these conversations and the support should help businesses access loan, loan finance uh, through the, and support cash flow challenges that you all will face. And I hope you were also here today, the bounce back loan that the Chancellor announced on Monday, which I think will dramatically alter the fortunes of SMEs in terms of accessing loan finance with minimal bureaucracy and at some speed. By listening to businesses, we know that um, welcome that the government measures are, there are gaps, as always there are in, 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 in what uh, the government offers and, they, and there are businesses that are not eligible. So therefore earlier this month Jonathan wrote to the Chancellor highlighting what we see as the main gaps in otherwise exceptional and a generous scheme the government has set up. And I'll just highlight some of the points that Jonathan made in the, his letter to the Chancellor. The main business, many businesses in what might be termed as a general medical sector such as dentists and physios are not eligible. They're deemed to be essential service and deemed to be essential services, many earn their income from services to local people and in a sense very personal services to local people. And they've seen their demand drop off just as rapidly and perhaps even more rapidly than, than the retail and, and, and the leisure counterparts. Businesses in office, market, and industrial spaces, which in small businesses, borough, small business borough, such as Wandsworth are often closely linked to the local supply chains. So we know that many of our industrial occupiers are linked to the retail and hospitality sectors and affected in the same way with the drop in demand with no similar government support that the retail sector has got. 
And we have many small businesses in the retail and hospitality sector where the rateable value uh, is above 51,000 threshold and they receive no support. This very low threshold in a borough such as Wandsworth. So we agree with the Raise the Bar campaign that the threshold should be raised to 150,000. And if that were to happen, many, many more local businesses would benefit from the, from the support that the others have already uh, uh, had. And finally, the self-employed who earn over 50,000 are excluded from the government scheme. And those owner-occupiers owner who are paid through dividend uh, uh, receive minimal support. So again, those are, are, are two groups who are excluded from the government scheme, which Jonathan has raised with the Chancellor in the hope that we can persuade him to come up with a scheme that, that addresses their needs. So what we are arguing for this two are the two changes, firstly, the raising the rateable value from 50,000 to 250, so that they can access the, the, the grant support. And then for the self-employed, the scheme to be expanded so that the first 50,000 of the annual income, uh, should it be including dividends if that is the case, is, is covered by the government self-employed scheme that the government has put together. So this, I believe, would be a fairer approach and recognize the broader economic linkages and relationships. But it also makes actually business sense, doesn't it? It makes you know, business capacity and supply chain linkages once lost will take a long time to recover. And Steve, I know that you worked very hard in developing linkages between, for example, Nine Elms businesses and the local business system to, to be part of the Nine Elms supply chain. How much work it took for you to develop those supply chains, those could be lost in a zip. In a, and so we need to make sure that those are protected. We will otherwise lose the opportunity to build on the customer and community links that many of you have developed over the years and, and, and which form such an important part of this borough's life. And we need to build for the future as a part of the economic recovery. And I call, therefore I call the government to support us in this. What is also becoming clearer to me, and, and we had some correspondence earlier, is that the further we go into this lockdown, ministers need to do more about some of the direct experiences of the business community. And your members' experiences with the insurance industry is an obvious issue about which I'd be very happy to write a lecture now. I also know that there are tensions between consumer rights and business support, and sometimes even common sense and consumer rights. But this is a tricky area for a council to get involved in, but I am sure that uh, I'd be happy to try and uh, work out some way of uh, sharing your experience with Paul Scully at Biz, who is Man uh, Minister for Consumer Affairs. In concluding, I want to reiterate my support for the work the Chamber has done throughout this crisis, but, but you know, all the way in supporting Wandsworth's business community and being a platform for the business world and, and, and uh, providing a window for us to look into the affairs of the business community. I also know that when this crisis is over, the world will have changed. Your world will have changed just as much as the council's world will have changed. And I think we want to build the new world on the strengths of the old and learn some from the experiences that we've all had to go through. And the council, we've been taking some time to learn those lessons and collect those lessons. I want to come to you in due course to share with you those lessons, but also hear from you, your understanding, your members' understanding of what changes can be made for what, what, what should be a better tomorrow. So again, I, you know, I hope to come back to you after this crisis is over to learn and learn together. Steve, as you mentioned, I can't stay because I've got somewhere else to go virtually, of course. Um, so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. And I know Jonathan and Mr. Russell stay on, on board. They would be happy to help you through. See, Mr. Diamond is also there. So between three of you, then they will be able to cover everything from the council. And if there is anything else you or your members wish to raise with me, by all means, you know, drop me a line and I will do my best to get back to you. So thank you very much for this opportunity uh, and all the best for the rest of the morning. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ravi. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say thank you to you for allowing um, your councillors and officers to work with the Chamber to keep lines of communication open. I think from day one you readily agreed to come onto these forums and, and put yourself in front of uh, residents and, and, and businesses. So thank you very much for that. Uh, just one, one question for you, I guess, for me is, you know, we, we, we know councils uh, do not have the money and they're just instruments to pass out money. Um, but we've also seen that councils are struggling and written to government for support. So uh, what's the state of Wandsworth Council? Are you going to uh, be in difficulties or are we all pretty safe? So we've had the second tranche of government money. The sum was announced. It's roughly the same as last time, a little bit more, just, just a few pounds more. I think that early indications are that that just over 16 million pounds should cover the direct costs that we have had to bear um, over the lockdown period. Uh, there may be a little bit here or there in it, but I think the direct costs are probably manageable within that support. But what is the most crucial element that uh, we are all struggling with is the loss of income. I mean, a vast amount of council income is being lost in the sense the parking revenues, for example, are down because there are no parking income coming through. So I would suggest that uh, there is a dialogue to be had with the Chancellor and the government about what is it that the government will do to support local government with lost incomes. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, as you kind of look, you're welcome to stay as long as you wish, but as you log out, I'm going to ask uh, Jonathan Cook. Jonathan, you're not on the agenda, but I wouldn't like you to think that the leader's taken your place at these meetings. Would you just like to say hello? And, um, and uh, I know that you'll be around for the Q&A session. Yes, well, well hello, Steve. Yes, um, yeah, it's, it's great to be, be on another call. You know, th thanks again for, for all the organising. We, uh, we sent the letter off uh, that the, the leader mentioned um, to the Chancellor yesterday, um, so we'll be following up on that. And perhaps I, the only thing I would add is that um, we're conscious there's a very long list of things that we we could lobby on and we will in due course lobby on but we focus on those four main themes for the time being uh, but there are other things coming through so just to reassure people that for example the insurance uh thing that that uh uh the huge issue there that uh the leader mentioned yet not forgotten it's, it's on the list and we we will come to them in due course but um yeah thanks thanks very much i'll maybe leave it there for the time being right and thank you very much jonathan so uh, now I'd like to invite Assistant Director Graham Russell to come on board. Graham, you've been very, very good at uh, keeping us informed on how the implementation, implementation support process has been rolling out. Um, what's the latest? Uh, okay, so um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm not proposing to go through the list of the various things that we're, we're doing. Uh, I will just comment briefly on them at the end. But on the grants front, um, we're slightly better than Council of India's figure because we, we did a run last night. So we're, we're now at uh, 44.3 million paid out to 2,792 uh, businesses. We have a team of people who are ringing around trying to contact the other business that we, we believe may be eligible. Um, as Council of India said, we'd be very grateful if you could uh, pass on the message to people. There is... Um, something of an anecdotal uh, view that some um, smaller businesses in receipt of small business rate relief don't actually believe they can get this grant because they don't pay any rates. That's not, not the case. They can get the grant. So if you do know of any who haven't claimed, please ask them to go to the council's website uh, and put in their claim. Um, the, I'll just give you the website address. It's wandsworth.gov.uk forward slash business relief grants. That's all one word. Um, the second point, well, probably the final point I'd like to make on the, um, the extended retail discount scheme, this is not the grants, this is the, uh, the retail relief. We're still having some difficulties with our software provider who hasn't processed those changes yet. So everybody who, uh, is in receipt of retail relief will get a revised bill. Um, I'm hoping that will come within the next week. Um, and that will be a, a, a bill for not, a zero for 2021. Um, so apologies that's taking a bit more time than we'd anticipated but we will get it done and if anybody's actually paid anything they will obviously lead you a refund and we'll process those as quickly as possible 
and I'll be happy to take any questions, Steve, if there are any. Right. Lovely. Thank you very much, Graham. Uh, just one question for me at the moment. And uh, is there a backlog of uh, claims or are we up to date? And has everyone been paid out that has made a claim? Um, or are some people still waiting? Right. Just draw up my magic spreadsheet. We have uh, 108 cases where um, our pre-payment audit checks have picked up an issue and we're um, working on those. But apart from that, the rest have been paid. Right. That's lovely. And I, I just want to personally thank you because where businesses have found it uh, difficult to get through the switchboard, they've emailed us. Uh, you've got back to them direct, directly and it's been really helpful. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and we'll see you on the Q&A in, 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 in a while. Thank you. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Mr. Richard Behrman from uh, Brit British Business Bank. Uh, Richard's very kindly uh, agreed to come on and give us an overview of the uh, business interruption loans schemes. Over to you, Richard. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, so thanks, thanks for, for, for having me on. Um, so yeah, so I, I work at the British Business Bank, so uh, uh, one of the managing directors there, and my my sort of day job is looking after the startup loan scheme. And actually, I, I spoke at an event a little while ago, um, the one with Chamber, I think, is involved in. But the startup loan scheme is um, is my sort of day job, and that's primarily supporting smaller businesses in early stage and startups. And I just before I go on to the the, the wider scheme, just want to make a little um, prompt on that because that scheme is still very much open for business and active. And I think it's, it's an important while that I'm sort of trying to get out while we're talking about the coronavirus interruption activities to, to actually highlight that that scheme is still very much available. And for businesses that are, are starting up or have recently started up, that there's still support there. And that support is both the funding and advice and a pre-loan pre -loan support to help people get credit ready. Uh, and the reason for highlighting that is I just figure that there, you know, this time there's a lot of people that will be at home who'll be thinking about their next steps, thinking about, you know, the ideas they've had in the past or perhaps spotting opportunity in the current circumstances. And I just want to make sure they have the confidence that funding's available through the scheme and very much sort of there to be used. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of move on to sort of the main topic, which is the, the effectively the government support. So the British Business Bank is the government's economic development bank. And so effectively, we're there in normal times to try and help markets work better, the financial market work better for, for SMEs. And we do that um, mostly through working in partnership with financial organisations, with delivery partners, uh, working with um, you know, the banks like Barclays and other financial institutions and fintechs and the all finance market and effectively trying to help them get more funds out into the market. Uh, clearly, we've been called upon to... To, to do that, um, to do that, and support the government with its um, with some of some of its measures, it's been it's trying to put into place. One of which is the coronavirus uh, interruption loan scheme, and then that's also uh, built out into the, what's the C bill scheme. So a, a different scheme that has has many comparable elements, but is designed for larger businesses. Uh, and then also what was announced this week, which I, I can't talk in any great detail simply because it's so fresh and still evolving, but the announcement this week which is the bounce back loans which is very much designed for small amounts of lending so i'll give a quick summary of 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 the, the interruption loan scheme and and a small reminder of the bounce back as i say i cannot go into detail simply because we haven't i haven't got the detail to, to cover with you but the bounce back scheme as it has been sort of announced this week that is designed for fast access for funding um for up to fifty thousand pounds or 25% of annual turnover. And that's designed to be fast, pretty straight through processing. And the announcement was that that will be live on Monday. Uh, and more details will be out um, as, as the week progresses. Um, it, it sits, it's probably best way to describe it, it sits on the rails, it sits on the underlying infrastructure of the this, 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 the Seabill scheme, the interruption loan scheme. And so the intention is the accredited organisations that are involved in the, 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 the current loan scheme will also be involved in this, but clearly that would be their decision if they wanted to do that. So the interruption loan scheme. So um, 
there's clearly been lots lots said about it and it's got you know there's a lot of interest in in the press but i think it's worth highlighting that almost day by day the scheme is 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 growing in terms of the number of people that are given that are either given funding and it's actually drawn down or have actually had it approved so it, it it's absolutely starting to bed in and starting to work and and i think I think there's, there has to be, a, you know, I know it's difficult, it is difficult to, to say this, but there has to be a sort of, I think, a good, a good sense of credit going to the organisations that are involved because they adapted you know, quickly to a new scheme. It, it's set up, for those that know, on the back of the Enterprise Finance Guarantee Scheme, so it works in a similar fashion in the sense that the, the bank provides the money, the bank is making the decision, and the bank has the right to make that decision. It is a loan, it's not a grant. And so the bank has the right to sort of assess that, that business and effectively talk about viability. But I think the way to sort of, you know, and, and um, I think it's James from Barclays will no doubt talk about it much better than I, but in my mind, the, the key there is, is what was the state of the business on the run into this crisis? You know, if it was if it was a viable, you know, good business that, that is a good place, and actually the, the challenges it's got are because of the coronavirus, then that's the, that's the, the, the intent of the scheme to, to, to fund. And I think the simple way that I first heard the scheme was the scheme is there to try and help the banks turn a no into a yes. And the way that, that they're helped there is the, effectively the banks get an 80% guarantee, which means that the government is effectively taking a, a, a big part of the risk um, for, from the banks to, to help them um, get to get the funds out into into the marketplace, um, the, the the process um, I think is is getting faster and slicker with all the organisations. But again, I think the open, and again I, I don't know how Barclays have found it, but there's been a lot of interest, and so they themselves are managing it, you know, working from home in the same way. So. I think, you know, you know, I know there's been press about it, but I think credit to the banks for the work they do around this. And as I say, it's picking up pace and it's picking up speed, you know, day by day, and it's getting funds out into the market. Um, and, and and I think the, the recent announcements this week will hopefully um, not only sort of provide extra support to the, the business that need those smaller amounts, the sub £50,000 amounts, but also I think it will give further impetus to Sybils because effectively it will release some of the energy that some of the, the, the folk that work on Sybils to, to focus on those ones that, 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 that aren't getting picked up by the new um, automated straight through process that the bounce back is going to do. So I'm hoping next week Sybils takes another huge leap forward as well. Um, so I thought that would sort of, that would give us sort of a good, 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 good summary. And I thought probably a good thing from there is to sort of move to James. But I, I'm happy to take any questions now if you'd like, or or, or to, to 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 wait for later. I do, however, have to be off. I know everyone's saying it, but I do have to be off at uh, about 22. So I've only got another 10 minutes, unfortunately. But uh, I thought James could probably pick up. But happy to take questions if you think that's better. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, Richard. Uh, it's good to know. Um, I suppose you know one of the questions that's coming in from one of our uh, award-winning jewellers in Tooting Minar is that they've applied for the business interruption loan scheme and it's taking a, a very long time. And his question is, would he be able to apply for the bounce back loan scheme as well? There has been criticism of, of banks perhaps being too cautious in rolling out these uh, civil schemes. Uh, could you help us with that? Um, so. In, in terms, will he be able to apply? So you're right. I, I haven't got the full scheme, but if if the business is you know, the, the 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 bounce back scheme is designed, you know, if I read the chances statement, it's designed for all businesses um, that are looking for fifty thousand pounds or less. And so I I, I see n nothing thus far to suggest that any business won't be apply be able to apply for the bounce back scheme. I think I, I think it's unlikely that you'll be able to apply for both, but I, I haven't seen I haven't seen any any sort of detail on that. I think in terms of the, the time scale, so I think it's fair to say it, it, it varies organisation to organisation, but it will also vary business to business because it is still, um, it is still quite right in this circumstances that the banks are assessing the business. So they're, they're clearly trying to do that as quickly as they possibly can. But some businesses, for whatever reason, will be slower than others by the nature of either their, the position of business, the type of business and, and so on and so forth. And equally, different financial organisations are, are, are effectively coping with this, this better than others. And so, you know, it is possible to effectively shop around. But um, 
I, I, you know, I, I can I acknowledge you know that some sometimes the speed has not 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 gone through, and and but you know I think from my side I think equally I know the banks are doing their utmost to get this as as operationalized and, and people to support it as quickly as they possibly can. So um, yes, if it's taking too long, you know, my apologies, but um, I can't speak for particular cases, obviously. Okay, um, I, I just don't need you to answer this, but I'd make the point from uh, Harvey, one of our printers, uh, who says that, you know, the furlough money took four days, the small business grant took four days, but his civil uh, application's taken two weeks for processing, two weeks for decisions, and now he's waiting for a facility letter, which has been two weeks, and no sign of when the funds will be available. So it is a, a, a pressing issue for, for businesses, as I'm sure you appreciate, um, and I hope as, the, as a British business bank, um, you can help to uh, just push the banks to speed these through. But uh, I, 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 I hear the comment and, you know, I, I acknowledge that. And I think the sort of the only really response I can give is, you know, we are all working as hard as we can to get this scheme working for the businesses. Um, and I think the new scheme will add further impetus to that. That's, um, that's lovely. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much for appearing. That's really helpful. And I'm sure that um, from James, from Barclays, um, we'll be able to pick up the questions in the Q&A. If not, we'd, uh, we'll, we'll pass them, we'll collect them and pass them on to you. Uh, so thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. James, I'd, um, I'd like to introduce James Carden from Barclays Bank. Uh, Barclays is one of the Chamber's patron members and been very supportive. We've won, run quite a few uh, networking events at the Digital Clapham Junction branch. Um, and they've been extremely helpful through this process. And James has very kindly agreed to come on and, and, and just give us some tips and tricks uh, as we go through um, making these applications. Uh, so James, over to you. Thanks, Steve. Morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, to quickly introduce myself then, so I'm the area business manager for the Wimbledon and Wandsworth area. Um, as a quick overview, um, we, we look after about 13 or 1400 customers um, spanning um, 11, 12 people that report directly into me. Um, I thought comments from Richard were really, really useful, actually. Um, uh, specifically around delays in getting this finance out. Believe me, um, running the team, I can 100% vouch for every single person in my team. We want the scheme to be um, uh, less bureaucratic and uh, and to get the money out as quickly as possible. So just, just to echo those comments, we are, I know the banks um, behind the scenes, we are doing absolutely everything we can um, to get the money out as quickly as possible. Um, it's really helpful actually having Richard on before because he's 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 covered a lot of the things I was going to I was going to talk about. Um, so um, I think we know as of Monday there's going to be the bounce back scheme, which is going to be for sub fifty thousand um, pounds. I would love to, some as Richard, I'd love to give more details, but we just don't have them. Um, just coming to the point around speed, I think the um, again to echo the comments, just to show that we are all singing from the same hymn sheet. Um, the um, the expectation is that the sub fifty thousand pounds will ultimately be on a self service basis. They will require um, little um, um, kind of process input from from the banks or from people, and it will be. Um, I mean, the, the the time scales that I'm advised we're talking about, we are talking a matter of days rather than weeks. So. Um, we, we do hope and believe this is going to take a lot of the volume out of the system uh, and that will leave um, certainly my team to uh, to look at those larger value uh, requests. Um, so that's coming as of next week. I thought um, as per my kind of subject matter, in terms of what I'm seeing, I'm probably seeing um, between eight and ten applications a day uh, from my team. So... Um, I thought it would just be useful to go through some of the common themes I'm seeing. Um, introduced from last week, um, which can be found again on the British Business Bank uh, website, there is the um, there is a new um, undertaking in difficulty um, attestation that Barclays, as I believe other banks are, asking customers to complete um, prior to their application. Um, and certainly some of the areas where I'm seeing customers are actually out of scope um, 
is around this undertaking in difficulty attestation, um, specifically around accumulated losses uh, being more than half of a business's share capital. Um, so under the terms of the scheme, um, if a business has accumulated losses of, of more than half its share capital um, to the 31st of December 2019, um, they are deemed ineligible. Um, it's not to say that Barclays or any other banks can't help them, but in terms of the specific civil scheme, uh, they would be deemed ineligible from that. Um, that's probably the first, um, in terms of top tips, um, that's probably the first thing I was I would I would like to highlight. I think again, going on just 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 to echo the comments, the way the schemes tried to be administered is um, it's a look back approach to see um, was that was that business viable as at the thirty first of December twenty nineteen. Um, and from our CEO's um, comments around if it was a good business in 2019, then it'll hopefully be a good business in 2021. Uh, so that's the first thing um, in terms of top tips. Um, in terms of what we are trying to do, um, it, is a, it is a credit assessment, certainly for, 50, for loans £50,000 and above. Um, some of the, um, I've, I've broken it down into four parts, which I thought might be useful to, to just touch on very quickly. So um, the first one is purpose. So uh, in terms of what's being requested, um, does it fit in with purpose and the spirit of the scheme? So um, we've seen requests for... Um, large amounts of money under the civil scheme to buy shares in uh, public listed companies. We've seen them for um, for asset purchases um, that potentially would be deemed not in the spirit of the scheme. So um, for anyone who's listening up, um, who, who is considering to apply for this, I would really uh, hone in on um, almost pound for pound. What is, what is the purpose of the funding requested going to be used for? Um, because we will be asking those questions to uh, to attest from our side that it's in the spirit of the scheme. Um, the second amount, uh, sorry, the second uh, kind of bucket to land in is is on amount. Again, Richard touched on it again. Um, is the amount um, does it does it make sense? Does it stack up? We have some internal metrics uh, that I think are common across the industry, but it relates to. Uh, maximum amounts of 25% of 2019 annual turnover or uh, two times annual wage bill. So the requested amount cannot exceed either of those two metrics. So that's 25% of the annual turnover and two times uh, the wage bill. I think probably the area we have most debate on uh, internally is around viability. Um, so um, the bank is charged with making an assessment um, in understanding uh, the viability of that business as of December 2019. So um, we asked for uh, previous accounts. We looked to understand if there's been any CCJs or any other difficulties. Uh, we'd look to um, see how the account has been managed um, and, uh, and I guess try and form a viability um, um, understanding based on based on those and other factors um, I think finally most most importantly um, we have to do an affordability assessment and um, this is this is probably where we struggle the most um, the the coronavirus interruption loan scheme it is a loan and um, as a responsible lender we have to ensure that um, we are lending responsibly and that that loan um, can be uh, can be repaid and um, uh, we, personally um, we are seeing a lot of um, businesses approach us who um, who may have outside finance or um, in the in the two three recent years they haven 't made the uh, level of profits that would uh, necessarily um, be able to support um, a large amounts sometimes very large amounts of debt going into the business um, so I would say that that is a that is a common stumbling block um, due to the nature of the scheme in terms of proven affordability. Um, I think those are probably the main uh, in terms of the undertaking in difficulty attestation and a couple of um, there's probably as I say four four key areas that we are commenting on from a from a credit risk perspective um, in terms of what makes a uh, application. Those are probably the, the, the key points, Steve. So um, 
I'll probably hand back to you at this point, but as I'm more than happy, I'm going to be on the call to the end, so I'm more than happy to take any any questions. Uh, that's lovely, Joe. Thank you very much. I think the um, the four tests or the four key areas that uh, banks look at was really helpful to understand. Just a couple of things. Um, one is uh, CCJs. Now, uh, a lot of, you know, we've recently had a, a very heart-rendering letter from one of our uh, members, and they hold a lot of customer deposits um, in the leisure industry. If they give that back, they're going to be in an in a untenable situation. They're, you know, they'll have to go for, uh, to wrap up the com- company. But the, the businesses are... They're under contract to give that money back. The uh, Citizens Advice Bureau is saying, well, just sue them. But if they get sued, they get CCJs and they go out of business and then the customer wouldn't be the first creditor on the list. How would the banks look at CCJs that are coming out now uh, because of the coronavirus? Um, I mean, yeah, it's very difficult to comment on individual cases, as I'm sure you can appreciate. I think every CCJ has a story. Um, sometimes it is uh, one of the early warning signs that a customer is in difficulty. Um, it isn't to say that just because there's a CCJ, it's an automatic decline. Absolutely not. Um, I, I think any CCJs, um, we of course have to understand. Um, we of course have to understand the reasoning behind that. I saw one for a hundred pounds, um, and it was a dispute from a from a delivery company. It was it was it was minor, but I appreciate it then. It then does it then does highlight on uh, on on the record. So um, I, I, without without looking at specific cases, it's very difficult for me to comment. Um, but I would say there is a story behind every single one, and and it's not an automatic uh, computer says no. Uh, that's really good to know. And the other question was, um, if someone doesn't bank with you, but you you seem a more efficient. Could they apply to you for the civil's loan? I'll, I will, I'd, I'd love to. Um, it, it's, it's great to hear if we've got any anecdotal evidence of us being more, more, more efficient than any of, than any of the other lenders. Um, I, I would say um, uh, customers, so anybody can apply, um, even non-customers can apply to Barclays um, under the civil scheme um, as as any Barclays customers can apply to any of the other accredited lenders. Lenders, um, I would say um, with resource absolutely um, stretched in pretty much all areas of the bank at the moment, um, we are um, we are looking at helping our existing customers um, where we can first at the moment, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, but in answer to your question, there's absolutely nothing wrong going to any of the other um, accredited lenders. All right. Thank you, James. I wasn't implying that you were better. Um, I was hoping uh, you were. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, but uh, we that. Um, another question is, um, would uh, these type of loans cover restart costs? Um, you know, cash flow will be tight, sales will be down, and it will take a time, uh, a long time for businesses to recover. Um, I a really good question, actually. I think uh, in terms of my top four four tips, it probably goes down to the purpose. Um, the government scheme has put in for critical and emergency payments. Um, generally, they are, um, um, we see a lot for rent, for trade creditors, um, for wages that are really deemed um, important for that business's survival. Um, the trickier ones for us to assess are for those that, are potentially forward planning, looking to come out of uh, whatever the world looks like after this uh, and may need that liquidity um, to to kind of catapult their business afterwards. Um, again, it's very difficult without seeing, the, um, without seeing the case of it, but there could be an argument to say, well, actually, that, that, that could be um, deemed as business as usual for the banks in terms of helping that customer uh, restart or bounce back out of this. Um, but that is why we will really interrogate what the money is for. And, um, and of course, if we can, um, if it is applicable and we can put it through the government scheme, uh, then of course we will do. All right. 
Lovely. And then uh, an another question from one of our garages, GSF Motors. Um, how good at the, are the banks at providing feedback um, if a loan is rejected? Do you come up with some suggestions on alternatives or is it just, you know, sorry, the loan's not accepted? Oh, take me off mute. Um, I think I, another really good question. I think if we cannot do it through the Siebel's, um, through the Siebel's um, scheme, we are we are automatically looking to see can we do it under business as usual. So um, in terms of the undertaking difficulty perspective, we do have a lot of negative uh, balance sheets, um, customers with, with, with negative balance sheets that potentially um, would fail the accumulated losses uh, um, kind of ratio. However, um, it may be a business that is um, something that we would want to support in terms of um, business as usual lending products as in uh, lending overdrafts or um, uh, trade debt of finance, for example. Um, I would say um, um, we would look to explore certainly internally before we would then refer outside of the bank um, to our financial assistance platform. Uh, but before we even get to that, we would obviously encourage everybody to make to make use of the uh, grants that are available that you've obviously some of them you've you've discussed on this call already. Right. Uh, uh, great. Uh, one last question from me before we throw it open to the panel and take questions. Um, the question I was going to ask uh, Richard Behrman was uh, and equally applicable to you is um, we've heard from a number of the meetings that we've been having online with businesses that uh, and, and advisors and um, that a third of these business application uh, loans are more successful if you go through an advisor. Um, is that is that what you're finding? Um, it'd be very. It'd be very. I assume that's related to the quality of the information that's being provided. Um, I I, th I think um, I, I'm seeing applications where. Uh, where unfortunately some customers aren't able to provide the last two or three years trading figures. So um, I guess on that basis, it makes it very difficult for the bank to make a viability decision um, uh, when there's certain things we can't see. Um, I think some of the best ones we have seen are, um, yeah, absolutely, where they have gone through an advisor, where they've been able to set out um, previous performance, uh, commentary on um, up-to-date business performance and uh, in some cases um, kind of a, a glimpse into the future of whatever that looks in terms of um, certainly one that I can recall was a, a three a three um, three page um, explanation of best worst and most likely outcomes so um, I would say I would say that helps I would but I would also say I wouldn't make it a prerequisite that every that everybody now should go and seek a business advisor um, for for a lot of requests um, I'm sure the members un understanding of their own business and the provision of fairly basic financial information should be sufficient okay thank you very much James it's just that on, on one of our uh, webinars um, we had a, a business advisor on board um, and I thought well for a business to, to go through this process, you know, are they thinking extra cost, extra cost? The business advisors don't come cheap. Uh, but, and actually speaking to them, quite a few business advisors um, uh, do uh, belong to the FCA and they don't charge. They um, take a small commission from the, uh, the lender, uh, which makes it, you know, a totally, totally viable proposition. So just a message to businesses, I'm more than happy to put you in touch with uh, the person I, I, I'm been in contact with us, he's not a member at the moment, uh, but you know, uh, I've gotten to know him and he seems to be providing some quite sound advice. Uh, from his point of view, they, they know um, what the banks are looking for um, and they can really help in, in putting together not only the application, but you know, the business strategy to, to make it, it work. So that's, that's just a consideration for everybody. Um, thank you very much for that, James. Thank you to all of our speakers. I'd like to now throw it open uh, for questions. 
Um, we've had some questions in the chat box already. If those, uh, th th a lot of those may have been answered, but can I just ask you to type in the, in the chat box, yes, I'd like to ask a question or yes, uh, and we'll come directly to you. Um, and whilst we're waiting for that, um, I just, uh, for, for Graham Russell, um, we've had a, a, a message from uh, Ediana at Mitoi uh, that they've received an, another rates bill for financial year 2021, first instalment due on the 10th of May. Presume that's going to be corrected. Uh, I've responded through the chat to that. Oh. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know the business. So uh, if, if the business is um, eligible for the retail discount, then they will get a, a revised bill for nothing. If they're not, then that is their rates bill. Lovely. Thank you very much, Graham. And we have Mark Justin, who's raised his hand. I'd like there. to ask can a question. You, you um, uh, just a question for James. And um, I don't bank with Barclays, but I thought he was very, he was excellent there. When he kicked off with the four um, criteria, you were very... Um, accurate at the beginning in terms of your 25% of the 2019 turnover or two times the wage bill in terms of the amount of the loan. That's, that's really helpful. When you got to number four, which was the affordability, you, it started to get a bit wishy-washy there. But, sh but surely as a bank, you must be using some kind of ratio of affordability. And I wondered, would that affordability be something like a um, the repayment of the new loan um, as, a, as a percentage of your declared profit. And there must be some banks love ratios and love percentage. So what percentage are you using to calculate the affordability? Absolutely, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I certainly wasn't meant to be um, scooting over that point intentionally. So um, apologies if it came across that way. Um, so in terms of affordability, um, we look at um, we look at the total debt in the business, and as you say, we look at what those um, annual repayments will be on that of the total debt, um, and we look at the um, total debt to adjusted EBITDA. So that's the earnings before interest tax depreciation um, minus any dividends out of the business. Um, but I think again, not not to echo constantly reference Mark, we we are looking to try and uh, we are looking at reasons to do the loan not reasons not to do it um, in terms of our kind of business as usual benchmark um, in terms of our standard risk appetite we always try and get to a point where businesses can generally afford the debt two times over so if your um, if your if your annual debt repayments are uh, twenty five thousand pounds let's say um, we generally try and look at um, a kind of a um, an anchor point of uh, fifty thousand pounds of adjusted EBITDA that gets us to our two times cover. Um, of course, it's not as simple as that. If it was as simple as that, I wouldn't have a team of people. We wouldn't constantly be de be debating this. So, um, if we use that two times as a reference point, we then uh, if we can't get to the two times, we then look to see. Well, actually, the customer's taken fifty thousand pounds dividends that year. Do they really need that money? Can we can we can we kind of go back and make assumptions to say they might only need twenty or thirty thousand, or we might look back and say actually the, the the business made a loss last year, and that's because of X, Y, and Z, which were deemed exceptional. So, ha had it not been for those exceptional points, and um, the customer would have made X amount of money, and therefore we would have had one point seven two times coverage. Um, so. That's the most direct answer to your question in terms of how we've been administered to, um, in terms of how we've been asked to administer the scheme, it is our uh, business as usual lending policy. So if you'd come to, if you'd come to uh, the bank for a loan um, six months ago, uh, my team would have still been trying to get to a two times debt coverage. Uh, we don't always get there. It, as I say, if it, if it did, it would be really easy. So um, that's where the skill of uh, my team and, uh, and myself um, as the leader of the team comes in to make sure we are uh, we are we are taking a proper look at this. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Just to, when you say two times debt cap, so say you've you've got an existing loan with a bank, you you might have an overdraft, and you might have a, a credit card in connection with the with the. So all, all those three things would, would would add up to monthly payments. Monthly payment for the existing loan. Monthly payment well, the overdraft and, and monthly payment for credit card. So you, you would add up those plus the new 
the new monthly repayment for the loan you'd be discussing. And that would have to be two times. I mean, that's the bit I don't quite understand. Yeah, almost. So on the overdraft part, we would take the element of interest, not the not the actual capital part, because that's obviously right. deemed a working capital facility as per the um, as per the credit card facilities you mentioned. Um, any existing loans, um, they can be refinanced into the Sybils. Yeah, product. no, I was expecting that the existing loan to be rolled over into the new one. So that would because because what my bank has actually got back to me with saying we'll give you um, a repayment holiday and I'm saying if you actually replied to the first part of my email which was a new loan you wouldn't have to give me a repayment holiday on the existing loan because it would be rolled over into the new one so can we talk about the new loan and then she's oh I'm not in that team I'm only in the team that that um, gives you a payment holiday I said that's a shame isn't it after I'm waiting since March the 19th for a reply yeah, I think um, I think the guidance on the ex- of the refinance in the existing loans um, has been fairly. Um, um, it's not been as clear as we would have wanted to. Um, I think um, some of the biggest challenges are where we have got existing loans. I think it's 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 useful to remember that the Sybils product only goes up to a maximum of six years. Um, so depending on what your or the, or the customers' um, existing loans are. Um, it may or may not be a good thing to to refinance that existing loan. The exist, um, existing think, loans are always the best mo- uh, monitor of of um, ability to pay because if you've been paying an existing loan, you can pay a new loan. I, absolutely, I think um, from a from a, from a viability perspective, it absolutely is. I think that some of the some of the some of the very challenging cases we've seen are where some customers have taken out quite quite. Um, um, short, short tenured loans with um, platform lenders like Funding Circle or iWalker um, that are on fairly short repayment profiles of sometimes three or four years. So on a monthly basis, um, although the customers have been keeping up with those repayments, um, we have to we have to take a credit risk decision on on whether or not we can then afford to put more debt onto that business. Um, in some cases, they aren't able to meet the um, affordability calculations, unfortunately. Okay, Mark, thank, you I, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, yeah. Can I uh, ask Thanks, Mark. Peter Elkowski to uh, ask ask his question? Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, the, basically, that my questions will be more for, for the councillor, but I'm sure someone can help me with that. Uh, there are two 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 important points uh, which I would like to mention, and I don't I unless I missed it, he, he didn't mention that. First of all, uh, would be any, is there any chance to get a support uh, from the council? Or, uh, to do some sort of lobbying towards the insurance companies who uh, I'm sure many people on, in, in this panel today uh, experience are very uh, against paying any claims uh, for the business interruptions, finding any possible excuses and in fairness also doing whatever is possible not to pay those money back and to be honest, rejecting it even without uh, properly investigating the case, which uh, actually happening in our situation as well. Because we're pushing back on that, and they now, after rejection, they start to investigate it, which is quite interesting. The second thing was, uh, which already Yusuf uh, mentioned, it's uh, the fact uh, about the, um, the advice the customers getting from the from the uh, citizen advice bureau to, you know, you want your money, basically, uh, through the company, which um, which which not only can bring the company down, but they won't see the money. We all know. Well, no, I don't know if we all know, but there are many businesses who have to go through the uh, small claim court, and they know how the uh, how uh, the process works, and it's a very lengthy process, and can put the company down. So, I know it's not easy for for council to uh, to do any influence with the with the citizen advice bureau on the policies, but is there any way maybe the council start to try to educate uh, the customers, basically? Explaining them that the first of all process is lengthy. Second, uh, they may not even see the money because they can put the business out uh, out of business. And the third, well, as the councillor said, support our uh, support our local businesses and help them survive because it's on all, all our places. It's it's in our interest that all the businesses will survive for as long as possible. So I was wondering if there is any chance that the council can uh, lobby the government, the, the advice citizen advice bureau, and launch the company. Uh, some sort of campaign uh, to help the businesses uh, and pro- 
sort of educate the customers uh, so they can fully understand the extent of the of the current situation. From our experience, I know some of our suppliers, some of our customers, not sorry, some of our suppliers, which uh, not customers here, they owe us the money. And the, the the answer we got when we asked for that was, uh, sorry, we're not going to pay you now because the survival of our business it's up it's our priority. So if within a business between two businesses we've got this sort of uh, communication, I think the customers also need to see that. It's survival of our own. So my question is, is there any chance that uh, the council can lobby with the government and uh, possibly educate uh, the customers uh, to help them understand the current situation? Thank you. Yes, um, uh, Jonathan, I guess that's yeah. directed at you. Yeah. Um, uh, Ravi did uh, allude to some of that at the end of his talk. Um, and it is a, a huge concern, especially for the leisure industry, that um, you know, customer deposits, on the one hand, yes, you're entitled to your money, but we're urging people to support businesses. Do you think there is anything more that the council can do? Yeah. Okay, well, two, two points there. Maybe take them in, in reverse order. But, um, very happy to look more at what we can do in terms of... Um, Promoting promoting business locally and really sort of building people's understanding that if if they go after a company and it, you know, as as, as Councillor Govindia said it's it's yeah, it's it's a tricky area sort of legally because people have a legal right. To That's the right, yeah. But it see it seems it seems to me that perhaps some people embark on that path without fully understanding what the consequences might be for the business. So if, if a CCJ and then everything that flows from that is, is the consequence, did they really know that was what they might be triggering and ultimately the failure of the business? And as I understand it, uh, if, if then insolvency, um, you know, the sort of sequence is, is kicked in. It's the bigger creditors who come in first. So, you know, the people who maybe, maybe triggered that process are, aren't going to get their money. So do they understand yeah. that uh, when, when, when they, they trigger the whole thing? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, very, very happy to, to look at what more we could... I see it really as under the heading of protect, protecting and promoting local businesses and just as a community, you know, borough community, doing absolutely everything we can to nurture our businesses through this. And please, for heaven's sake, let's not sort of go after each other. Residents maybe go after after businesses, thinking, "Oh, well, this is the yeah, I've got a right to do this." Which, of course, yeah, in a narrow sense, they would have, but they realise the sort of the bigger consequences. Uh, so, yeah, very happy yeah. to explore that on the insurance point. Yeah, every every day I was looking at something this morning. Um, quite, I mean, I'd be astonished if it's if it if it's well, maybe it is true. One one percent of insurance policies have paid out. Um, which I mean is just shocking. Um, it is true. Yeah. What 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 our role as a council in? I would need to sort of fully understand that because of course that's countrywide. It's in, in nowhere sort of ones with a specific thing. But again, very happy to to look at that and um, yeah, do yeah anything well, that we, we can to just the the uh, the, Jonathan, the basically the explanation of the, the initial explanation of the insurance company is that um, although the, uh, our our policy covers um, the the, the 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 big sickness uh, in the 25 yeah. miles area, but they basically wiggle their way out, saying mm -hmm. that not if it's a national, and they, not if it's a national, and and considering the fact that we're talking about the virus, which is more widespread, they asking for the specific examples how uh, how the specific case of the of the coronavirus impacted the business, which. Has nothing to do with it. Has nothing to do with the commons. It's an obvious thing that they, whatever they're trying to do, is to make sure that they don't have to pay. Of course, if if we've, if you've got a business yeah. in London, the 25 miles area, it's literally mm -hmm. all London. Because I think that's the, that's the, that's the area of M25. So with the, with the majority of the cases being located being in London at this moment, how they can even cl claim for the specific examples? So yeah. you, you see, it's it's obvious they're trying to wiggle the way out. Uh, from paying that, and the same in the same time, the new premiums, uh, the new premiums which which many of the businesses are paying for the uh, mm. for the coming be, uh, be year, I increased, I increased by fifty and sometimes even eighty percent. So, Peter, I'm something's gonna, not right. Uh, I'm gonna uh, ask you if we can just leave that one there. I think we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's fine. fine. Thank you. And um, you know, it's, it's an area that is being lobbied for. 
I think at the moment, uh, insurance companies um, will have to make a huge decision. Uh, I'm going to get, now go to Tony Richards, uh, unmuting Tony, who's got a question. Hello, good afternoon. Um, this is a question for James Carlin. Um, Could you speak up a little bit, Tony? Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I've got a question for James Carden from, Bar from, Bar from Barclays Bank. Um, how is it perceived by the bank that uh, I sustain my business at this stage from my own pocket? And I want to, um, what I want to try and do is develop and pretty much advance my business. How is that perceived? Sorry, Tony, could you just repeat the question? Apologies. Okay, that's it. I mean, how is it perceived? Uh, by the bank that I from from my own business that I but I that is sustained from my own pocket and how is that how does the bank view that because what I'm trying to do with those is trying try to do with the um well, just to try and advance the business on how is that perceived. I, I think um, I think it's perceived very well by the uh, by the bank is is probably the short answer. We know we know the Sybils product um, is is in place for businesses um, who have experienced uh, this this interruption by the coronavirus. We are also seeing uh, businesses that are coming um, that that are starting and are developing who are who are benefiting and are, are seeing this as an opportunity. Um, so um, I think um, uh, as per, as per any, any kind of normal time, whatever normal time is, um, you showing commitment to the business, putting money, putting your own money into the business, which is your stake that showing you've got skin in, skin in the game, um, that uh, in short, it, it, it can only be seen as, as a positive. So um, as and when your business, you and your business um, potentially um, deem it suitable to approach Barclays or any other finance provider um, for additional support, um, the first thing they were looking, well, what money have you put into the business? What stake have you got? And if you can demonstrate what you've done and the money that you've put in, that, that can only be perceived um, very well indeed. Okay. Uh, can we ask a question on from that? Yeah. 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 Uh, we're, we've got our retail unit in Tooting. We manufacture natural skincare products. We have our manufacturing base in Battersea where we actually manufacture. And we want to know, obviously, a lot of what's been put through for business, certainly in a borough like Wandsworth, we're very much beyond the days of Wandsworth being a manufacturing borough per se. But are there any additional incentives for manufacturing based businesses? Because we manufacture and we retail our products as well directly. Um, in truth, um, I, I, I wouldn't know specifically, um, cer certainly not that I'm aware of um, from a bank's perspective, is the short answer. Um, so, um, I, I would say um, manufacturing, um, the bank's trying to support and promote manufacturing. Um, I would say that's, um, it's definitely an area that we would want to um, support in terms of um, finance. Um, uh, but in terms of your actual question, uh, there's, there's nothing that I'm aware of or anything that the bank's running. Okay. okay thank you. Yeah, Tony, uh, you know, I, I guess it's one of those areas that possibly falls into um, uh, money that might be available through research and development. I know we were doing some work with Roehampton University and there, there are different ways to approach this. Um, so maybe we can have a conversation um, later on. But yes. Thank you for your question. Steve, you. Steve, I can just, just add to that. Sorry, Steve yep. Diving from Wandsworth Council. So uh, this was one of the points that Sir Councillor Cook made in his letter to the Chancellor that actually um, retail and hospitality are part of a supply chain and they have manufacturers and distributors that are on our industrial estate. So we've made that argument that the, the, the grants process should be widened uh, to include all businesses in recognition of that. Um, so you're right, nothing much at the moment, but that's something that we've been arguing for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, we have a question from uh, Steve Bennett who's written it down. Does the 25, and this is for James, I think, does the 25% of revenue criterion for the bounce back loan apply to a single financial year or on average, e.g. three years? Will it also include the 2020 financial year to April? Um, 
to my company, which has already submitted its accounts. James, have you any? Is it too early to say on this uh, bounce back loan? Um, on the so if it's on the bounce back loan, that's um, the the t- the twenty five percent is the maximum of um, it's the maximum of the annual turnover or the or two times the wage bill. In terms of exactly where that date is cut, i.e., if you submitted your 2019 account say and it showed i don't know a hundred thousand pound turnover and for the nine months to december 2019 um you had a brilliant year and it was three or four times as much um i i i don't think i think as long as as long as the bank and my team have got some evidence sat behind it to say although march accounts say this actually we know the turnover is now this so as i um, it is that December 2019 is the is generally the cutoff date in terms of the undertaking difficulty and, and where we are looking back from. Um, so look, looking back to. So um, I would say in that specific, we're probably getting into quite a bit of detail here, but I don't think it's a it's a hard yes no. It's based on March 2019 or or or, or even earlier for for other financial years that might end in January or February. Thanks, James. I've tried to answer that the best I can. I'm sorry if it's not a good answer. (laughs) That's all right. It is early days for the bounce back uh, scheme. People are still trying to unravel it. Thank you, Steve, for that question. I'm now going to unmute Marjan from Blue Wave Swim School, who has a question. Uh, Hi, can you hear me, Steve? Speak up a little bit, Marjan. Yes. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Thank you very much, Steve. Um, uh, My question is to James. I understand Barclays has taken all the charges for the business accounts to zero due to coronavirus uh, epidemics and businesses have been affected. However, unfortunately, I don't bank with Barclays. I bank with another bank, which i rather not to name here, but another famous high street banks. And this, the charges, bank account charges are still going. Is it some form of goodwill gesture from Barclays or is it some form of government guideline how are we supposed to make a fuss about this how can it be different from one bank to another yeah i think um i think it's probably worth clarifying in terms of the bank charges um those have been reduced to zero temporarily for those businesses who have a turnover of uh, less than two hundred and fifty thousand pounds um so that was announced fairly recently in fact um i think it's part of the measures that we've implemented um across business bank and our personal banking. So if you're a personal bank customer, um, there are also um, interest-free overdrafts as well. Uh, in terms of other banks, um, I, can't, I can't comment. I think it, in terms of directly answering your question, it, it, I think it is being done bank to bank. There's, no, uh, there's been no um, um, specific intervention from the government to say um, banks must do X, X, X Y, and Z. So, um, um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. I think it is. I know Barclays and I think a couple of others are um, are trying to do their bit, whether it's overdraft charges or or banking charges or um, whatever it may be. We're we're doing um, we're doing a big thing on capital repayment holidays. So um, if you had a loan with us, um, we're we're looking to put in twelve month capital repayment holidays. And uh, in one example, we had that saved them over uh, five thousand pounds per month. So of course that money's going to have to be repaid but it just helps the cash flow so i think it is being done bank by bank so um for example if we want to kick up a fuss we can say that barclay is doing it while you are not doing it that's the whole argument we can make there is nothing that can make them to do it was referring to normal bank charges. I don't still understand why well, I have to pay 35 pence per transaction when, well, everything is on hold. I don't, this is, this is a nightmare, really. That's, and that quite adds up on a day-to-day basis. So, yeah, thanks a lot, James. <laughs> thanks, Marjan. <laughs> so, James, uh, one, one question from, um, from Harvey. Um, after the 12-month interest-free period um, for the Sybil's loans, what, what will Barclays be charging on interest rates-wise? 
so on the bounce back loan, um, I'll separate that answer into two. So on the bounce back loan, which is sub 50,000, um, my understanding is that it's going to be, there's going to be an industry standard. Um, so whether you get a bounce back loan from RBS or Barclays, there's going to be a set, uh, there's going to be a set interest rate. Genuinely, I don't know what that is going to be. I know for the Sybils loans, uh, which is the £50,000 plus, um, there's a range of between 25 and 5% over base. Um, so, um, we, it's, um, yeah, that's, that's the easiest way to answer that question. There is, depending on um, additional risk ratings um, and um, individual uh, business credit, credit ratings. And is that set at the... Um at the start of the, the loan period? It is, yes. All right. Uh, that's interesting to know because, um, again, in one of our seminars, someone raised this and um, the broker answered uh, and it was the bank was charging 8%, which some of the participants thought was very high. Um, but then the broker came back and said, well, look, you know, this is on an unsecured loan and it's, it's, it's not a bad rate. So uh, if Barclays are quoting between two and a half and five percent, then um, yeah, that's interesting to know. I think but, Steve, yeah, in terms of the in around. terms of the in terms of the early days, I know the sub twenty five thousand um, pounds loans where there was where there wasn't a formal um, scheme in place. Um, I know that there were interest rates between um, six and ten percent. Um, so again, I don't know this 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 specific case. I think. Um, the Sybils was twenty five thousand plus. So I think anything sub twenty five, the bank, the banks tried to um, put something together themselves. Um, the bounce back loan scheme is going to be um, is going to be is an official uh, kind of industry scheme that um, that is going to standardise everything. So uh, genuinely, I'm really pleased. I'm I'm really pleased that that's coming. Uh, yes, I, I think that's that's helpful too. Um, we don't have any more questions. Um, so unless someone types in the box very quickly or puts their hand up, I'm going to call this meeting to a close. Uh, just again, I want to thank uh, all the participants for attending and for putting those questions forward. We do provide all these questions, the written ones and the recording to Wandsworth Council and the speakers um, to, to take notice of, to act upon and perhaps to reply further to. Uh, it was great to have the leader of Wandsworth Council uh, on this forum uh, and Richard Bem from the Business Bank. Um, the leader's been very supportive of the council. Happy, he's happy to write out to businesses um, because the, the chamber is also a small business and you know, we kind of want you uh, to keep supporting us and to those members that have, it's been uh, an absolute honour to, to put these forums on. If you're not a member, please consider joining and supporting because I'm not sure how long we can, uh, we can actually keep going on. Um, but, um, yeah, it's just one of those situations, really. We all try to help each other. Uh, I think today's uh, forum was absolutely excellent. We've got some great stuff uh, coming out. And um, our, our reputation is spreading. This evening, uh, Zaib, uh, our accountant, um, and I've been invited onto Ramadan Radio uh, to talk about the same sort of issues that we have. So that's an exciting challenge for us. Um, but we just hope that we can continue to, to help businesses. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, last opportunity, does anyone on the, on the panel want to say anything? Zaid, we haven't heard from you today. I actually have a question um, um, for James. Um, James, um, I run a local accountancy firm and we're putting together loads of applications. Um, and um, we know from our experience that, that banks always have an appetite um, for certain sectors. Uh, with these uh, C-bills and um, uh, the new initiative by the government, Bounce Back Loans, um, will bank still um, prefer certain sectors over the others or it's a blanket cover? Uh, no, I think... Um uh, I think the C so the coronavirus, what we're seeing is coronavirus has um, it's impacted more on the hospitality and leisure um, sectors, which is which 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 is fairly obvious. Um, 
there is no um in terms of specific appetite i'm seeing applications from um from ev- from everything genuinely across uh, retail shops um dentists um um to to kind of um charity um recruitment firms i mean literally everything so um because it because this really has been so indiscriminate it's very difficult to uh to say the bank has an app a more of an appetite towards one sector or another it it, it really is being driven by um by 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 customer demand in terms of how coronavirus has impacted that that specific business which um uh we are in very um, we, we are in, in, in unprecedented times so um i think in terms of the bank trying to kind of cherry pick in what it is we want to lend to and or not want to lend to um i'm certainly not seeing that we aren't we aren't we aren't um it's been so indiscriminate we can't afford to take that attitude i would say okay thank you very much right with that i'm going to close we are looking for more contributions um, for, at these forums, uh, in particular, Martin Pocock, I'd love to talk to you. Martin's uh, an insolvency practitioner, but not from the point of view of winding up companies, but you're also an expert in keeping companies going and might be able to advise people on, on you know, what best actions to take uh, to avoid uh, liquidation. So Martin, perhaps we can have a conversation very soon and, uh, and, and line something up. Um, yes, thank you all once again, and uh, we'll see you next week. I think we're going to have a business forum next week, and we may have a rest just depending on how things develop. Thank you very much.